In this video, I will be doing a long-term review and capacity testing of the Xiaomi 5000mAh power bank. I have been carrying this power bank with me most of the time and it has served me well since the first day I had it in 2015. My power bank has been through two years of regular use and yes, this is not one of the newest power banks from Xiaomi but it is still possible to buy one today in the year 2017. In fact, the model number of the 5000mAh power bank being sold today is exactly the same which suggests that the power bank's original architecture was not changed since then. In this video, I'll be putting the power bank through its paces to find out how much capacity remains after 2 years of use. Before we do so, let's take a look at the specifications. It has a battery capacity of 5000mAh at 3.7V, which is about twice the capacity of an average phone. However, Effectively, we get only 3300mAh from the USB port because the voltage had to be stepped up to the USB standard of 5.1V. This conversion is not perfect and loses some of its energy in the process. Xiaomi believes that at least 90% of the battery's energy will make it out of the power bank. This is nice to know because most manufacturers do not state this. Using a cheap and inefficient converter would end up converting a huge amount of battery energy to heat energy instead of powering up your phone. The power bank is capable of receiving 5 volts at 2 amperes, which is quite nice because this means that the power bank can be charged up in about less than 2 hours. The power bank is capable of charging at a respectable 2 amperes, which means that the power bank will be all ready to go in less than 2 hours. It is also able to push up 2.1 amperes which is plenty for charging up larger devices such as tablets and iPads. The circuit diagram of this power bank would look something like this. Inside the case, we have a single lithium polymer cell connected to a rather clever device called the DC to DC boost converter to step up the voltage from the battery's 3.7 volts to the required USB voltage of 5 volts. Not only does the boost converter makes it possible to pull out a higher voltage than what is supplied by the battery, it does double duty to step down the voltage when using USB power to charge the battery itself. To find out how much energy is flowing at any given time, we can connect up a voltmeter in parallel and an ammeter in series between the power bank to my iPad. With the potential difference obtained from the voltmeter and the current from the ammeter, we can multiply these two values together to get the instantaneous power using the formula P equals to I times V. With this instantaneous power, we can then multiply it by the time taken to drain the entire power bank to find out the full amount of energy that was provided by the power bank. Theoretically, this would work, but practically speaking, this would take far too much effort because the voltage and current that the power bank provides is not constant. It changes to suit how much power your phone is willing to take so that it does not overheat or overcharge your phone's internal battery. Thankfully, there are USB digital multimeters that can keep track of how much energy that has been transferred from one device to the other. Now that we have the theory out of the way, the only thing left to do now is to set up the experiment and let it charge up my iPad. We will then pick it up when it is done charging. It has been about 2 hours and looks like the power bank is completely drained. We are finally done with the experiment and it is time to check how far we are from the original specifications. The magic number stated in the specifications is 3300 mAh and the remaining capacity is 2.539 Ah which is right about 77% of its original capacity. This is quite a good value considering that it has been through many cycles in a span of 2 years and continues to deserve a place in my backpack. Hopefully you find this video useful, with some basic knowledge of electrical theory, you too can determine the capacity and charging speeds of your power bank. If you like this video, do remember to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more physics related video reviews. 
I thank you for watching. Bye bye.